Colin, how are you? Uh, welcome and uh, thanks a million for, for being here. No problem. So uh, maybe to start, if you would maybe just tell us a little bit about your business, because uh, there's an interesting story I want to share with people, but it'd be good, first of all, maybe to get a background in on you, um, the business, and maybe maybe your business partners. Okay, so we are a design-led digital agency. So design first is important for us, but we also have a great team of developers. Um, we are we've we've opened an office in Alicante recently so we've just come through the process of you know all, all that red tape and everything that goes with yeah. it so congratulations that, on that that's a that's a big step forward yeah thank you you kind of helped us out with that kept us focused laser focused <laughs> <laughs> so we we so our, our business is called Orsight. um and we build apps and websites and create brands for different companies wide across all different sectors in Ireland, the UK and beyond. Um, we also have another company called Explore, which is an app, a digital infrastructure for towns, comes in the form of a web portal for the town to manage everything, an app for users to discover what's in their area. and. A website and some merchant services around that as well so okay another brilliant problem. brilliant yeah. and um and just tell me a little bit about your, the structure of your business because you've got business partners as well right yeah so there's myself james and jose um are, are behind both companies so i basically james is the discipline he right. manages the team makes sure things get done um, Jose is the brains, and I'm bringing up the rear. <laughs> I think you're putting yourself down there a little bit, Colin. But all right. And can I just ask you one question? You, know, you said at the very beginning, like the first words you used there was your your design led. What does that mean to you? Like what what is design led? So design led means we're all about how something looks and how easy it is to use. So there's a lot of companies in our space nothing wrong with them but they would be development led yeah um and i get that but we're just I, I guess it's kind of naturally how how we evolved you know yeah. we 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 always had good design nonce you know yeah and, and can make things look well but it was yeah. the, the last five years were about building that development team to get things working yeah. really well. okay. from, from a user perspective, it's how does it look and does it yeah. work? Users yeah. don't really care about how hard the developer worked or yeah, how yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it's of no interest to them. So we, we feel being design-led really helps you stay true to what you're trying to achieve because yeah. you know all this work starts with a pen and paper. Yeah. And if you can translate it from that, Right. So if I understand then, right, you guys like will design something first, make sure it looks right, make sure that everything's the right place for me, the user to kind of, I suppose, uh, intuitively know where I need to go next in order to, to use anything. Yeah. And then and then you look at, well, OK, how are we going to build that, guys, rather than saying, OK, build it, guys, and then we'll fix it at the front to make it work. Yeah, kind of so thing. It's more, so it, it's more about getting going through the process, the user journey yeah. on this, and also looking at what the business wants out of it. But then, you know, we, we do a prototyping package and, and that's key to the success of the online project really. So from a, a client perspective as well, that prototyping um, phase of a project allows us to get to know the client and then get used to working with us before they have to fork out the big money for development yeah, yeah. so so it's it, we can show this is exactly what you would get before we hand it to the development team yeah great mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. So we talked a minute ago, you mentioned there that you just opened up a, an office in Spain, um, which makes you international, which is uh, which is brilliant. So well done on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that um, it was a very different story um, 
at the beginning of, so we're now in July 2021. It was a very different story at the beginning of, of 2020, right? So maybe yeah. could you tell, um, tell us a little bit about what was, uh, what was going on there? We, we had a lot of, I guess, like looking at it, at, at it from a personal perspective, I don't think I, I knew what I was trying to do, you know? I had these ideas. This is before James. Um, and James is a very disciplined person, breaks things down into achievable goals, you know? It's just yeah. his name that he does it. And then you called and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll hear this guy out. Well, no, you dropped in with the book, which is a right, yeah. very good move. <laughs> but it's a good book too, in fairness to you. It was very well written. And then I told James about you and I was sitting in this room and just, he rolled his eyes going, oh, <laughs> these, these guys. And I said, look, meet him, you know, meet him and see what comes out of it. I said, you know, I, I said, I found our conversation very interesting. And I think what got me, like you hit the nail on the head for me, it wasn't about, like a lot of people talk about your business life and your personal life and you have to keep them separate yeah. to a point. But what, what you were talking to, to me about and what really got me and James was how do you become the person that is capable of running the type of business you want to run and i think that's what i was yeah. missing and that's huge value you know and and yeah. you went the whole way it was tough a lot of kind of things you have to own up to and you have to be very honest in the process but my god the difference <laughs> yeah 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 because because it was looking like i think at that point or maybe sometime before that that you might not survive like that the business might not have we made it through we were we were hanging on by our fingernails like in hindsight maybe you know three four years ago we should have shut just walked away yeah um not we me because i, I was you know i was making the balls of a lot of stuff at, at every step yeah. and always it was always from a i was making a balls of things from a good place you right. Know, okay. Fear. Tell me about that. Tell me more about you're, that. You're trying, it was this fear of saying no, yeah. you know, or just trying to keep people happy and thinking, oh, that's my job, to keep people happy. Yeah. And then you turn around and didn't have the resources to deliver a lot of things yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that was the, that, and that was also, that was the biggest thing that needed to change. And it was yeah. the top part of it, but the most worthwhile part of it. Yeah. So, so you, you spotted then that you needed help with that. And then you met James and James, I think you said he brings that, um, the structure, is that what you said? Like he's the guy who, who yeah. just makes structure. sure things happen. So, uh, you know, honesty. Yeah. Very yeah. Important. So that was kind of, um, you know, well done by you to actually acknowledge that, okay, actually, you know what I need, I need help here and actually finding James. So tell me a bit about that. How did that work? And um, we were we were working together on a very successful project called Unify, a student app for nights out, so like a ticketing app. And we wanted to take Unify out from the company and let it be its own business. So James was the man for that. He'd, be, he'd been with us the whole journey on it, the build of it and everything. There were our, he was running the clubs here locally that were the customers for it. Like. So it just, again, we, we were very lucky with the timing and it kind of happened naturally. Yeah. And while we were working with James on Unify and he had things working the way he wanted there, when he was looking around, seeing how the other things were going, you know, he he was open to helping me change that because it was okay. like was what was going wrong there, you know. Ah, good. Okay, so the two of you kind of came together on that, right? Mm. Um, and so then... Um, you know, this period then, you know, after James had joined you and like between there and kind of getting to the point where you were able to say, now we're an international company with offices in Ireland and offices in um, in Spain and your Explore app, I know, is in towns uh, all over the place. And I know it's getting um, some really good reviews and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you got some really interesting clients. So like things are going well for you guys. 
Yeah, we just um, picked up our, our first US client there in New York. Brilliant. Very exciting project. Brilliant. Really good to hear. The first, the first thing we did with James, so James has a lot of experience in managing people. And he asked me, what's the recruitment policy here? And it was always like, oh, sure, I know your man from here. And, <laughs> yeah. you, guys were there and you know, that kind of stuff. And again, you're trying to do, you're trying to do well by people, but you end up yeah. messing it all up. So first thing James did was put together our recruitment policy for different roles in different areas of the business. And the first person we hired was Rose. Um, she's, she used to run an agency in France and came to Ireland holidays, fell in love with the place. So she's moved over here. But, you know, the first thing we did really, uh, when, when we brought James on board, it was myself and James, there was a lot of shit to, to get fixed and to, yeah. to work through. And when Rose came in, we dedicated two whiteboards in the office to all the shit. So yeah. it was just everything up there. We know you're new here, but this is all shit stuff. Yeah. <laughs> to, you know, so we're not leaving anyone hanging and we're getting people sorted. And once we deal with, once we box all that crap away, we can move on to the new exciting stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that was a very frustrating period, um, but it had to be done. Yeah. And we had to keep people happy and, and see them right. So, yeah. so, and we learned a lot because that, that was a baptism of fire for all of us. Yeah. But it, yeah. It was, very so, so there was a whole lot of stuff that you had taken on. It was kind of too much for you. Um, you weren't getting through it. Rose comes in, James comes in. You say, okay, let's just get through this first before we can start yeah. to look at planning ahead and stuff like yeah. that. Okay. And then, and then you knocked on the door. Yeah. And then things just went up another level, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so tell me about that. Like, so what is it for you? Like, what is that other level? What changed in you guys to bring well, it to that other level? Like personally, I always knew I had potential and, and maybe was maybe at times just didn't have, uh, it's hard to describe, but I wasn't doing the things I needed to do to be able to reach that potential. Yeah. And then maybe you feel, oh, this won't be a problem. Sure, I'm well able to do that. But if you don't have the structures in place, it, you know, it, it's tough. And the more resources you need to meet demands, and if you're stretching that, things go wrong. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think it was just breaking it back to who are the people behind this business and how do we get those people to the right space yeah. so that they can handle this, you know? Yeah. And that's that's what we found fascinating with the process we went on with you. Right. You know, okay. it's like the morning, morning routines and all that kind of stuff. You know, stuff before, you know, you, you picture the guy looking in the mirror, I'm a strong and successful <laughs> man and I could do this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's where the eye rolling was coming from with James. But like, yeah, 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 yeah. These, yeah. You know, not, that, yeah. not that it's that, like, yeah. but it's going back and, and equipping yourself with the tools you need and giving yourself that foundation to be able to handle the things you, you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. And the maddest thing, you know, comparing those two periods is that we now have a, a business that's run really well and we, we do great work for clients and we get paid for our work. And I find that we're doing more, but I have more time. Yeah. You know, okay. Because you've built this structure. Um, and so you can yeah. rely on the structure and the foundation to kind of help you to get to do what you want to do. Yeah. 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 So you're not running around doing everything. You concentrate on what you're really good at. Yeah. Like James is off on holidays today. Yeah. No panic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. It's really good to hear. Um, <laughs> And so I, I know in this as well, we talked, there was a lot of kind of, um, uh, so, so we had, so there was that kind of structure personally, right, that, that needed to be developed in order to move, kind of move on to the next thing. And then there was a lot of like looking at the business and figuring out, you know, who are we as a business and yeah. communicating that. So tell me a little bit about that and how that worked for you. So, well, well to, I need to take a step back before I do that. Like, I, I think that, the importance of figuring out 
and getting the getting your own headspace right is fundamental because you you can't go forward to look at the business to look at anything until you've that bit understood and you're working on what you need to work on to to kind of move forward to to be in a stronger position to be able to be better able to make decisions to yeah. just be better and have the head oxygenated you know you're you're yeah. you're, fresh, you're ready but then, is, is this can I just interrupt you for there a second because you no. said earlier on like to that you talked about becoming the person you needed to become in order to kind of get the business yeah. to where it is so is that what you're talking about there so becoming yeah. that person yeah. yeah okay that's that's like such a great start to this and I think it's the it's you go to a place there where you can become the person who, who doesn't want to run the business yeah you know yeah. that's fine yeah you know, but but when you have those tools and you can make better decisions, everything is much more enjoyable, and and yeah. you fail based on your knowledge or you succeed based on your knowledge, and that's a lot easier than failing because you messed up. You know. Yeah. Okay. So so then what I'm hearing from you there is like you're not trying to kind of build the column that can make this business work. You're just trying to build the column that wants to do what he wants to do. If it turns out he doesn't want to run a business. Yeah that's okay right yeah that's okay. it exactly yeah so so that was very good and then then you're in a good space to look at the business and go what are we trying to do here so i guess like with the web development and all that kind of stuff we're, we're in a very competitive space and there's more and more um options available to clients like shopify and squarespace and all these things where you can get stuff done you know cheaply and easily and those things work really well yeah but I guess because we are like having completed the first kind of phase, we're more confident people. So we're, we're confident that we can do things at a much higher standard, much more personalized, yeah. and give people the benefit of our experience and our knowledge, you know, to do really different things online yeah. for, for customers. So, so that was hugely <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you're confident that, that you can provide that, but at the same time, then there's all these other ways that you could, people could do something like mm. cheaper. So there's also, you're, you're saying, I suppose, um, indirectly, you're also confident that there's a market out there to pay the premium for what you yeah. want to Definitely. provide as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we do, we provide the premium stuff and that, that comes with a price tag that we need, like we charge, we bill hours basically. What we do with our time is what our customers want. So whereas in the past we might have tried to do, tried to get the, the bill down for a client by pricing it really low. Yeah. That's a disservice to the client. Yeah. Because we have to rush things or it comes to no, you can't have that. Yeah. It comes to a place where there's tension, you know, and you don't need that. And we can price things openly honestly the way it suits our business and a client can choose to come with us or or not and yeah. that's fine yeah you know no one has to fall out of that yeah. yeah and um so i was just i was reading an article you wrote recently and you in it you said like go big or go home so mm. is that coming back to that is that, yeah. is that where that comes from yeah do, do, do things right yeah um bill for the time you need to do things right yeah and so then i'm kind of hearing from that then if it, so if a, if a client comes to you you look and you you cost something up and it's going to be whatever the cost is um if 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 the client today doesn't have that budget or wasn't expecting that then you go home right um, yeah but if the but you're not trying to kind of make it work so that you know what we often do in business we try to make it work in a way that we end up making no money on it and we don't enjoy the process and the client isn't happy and you're not happy at the end of the day you, at the end of the it, day. you try to do something that you do not have the resources to do yeah and, and capital is the biggest resource like if a client can't afford us like we've turned many clients from being in a position not to be not being able to afford us to being able to afford us you know okay. so We'll often sit with clients, talk to them, discuss their idea. We'll, we'll you know, I've seen, pe I've seen people just go white when they hear the price. But then you can explain to them, okay, this is what you need to do 
to raise the funding for that. Or you mightn't be ready yet for this. Or you might say, you're mad to do all that first. Why don't you just prototype it so you have something to go and get investment? Yeah. And that, that's kind of how we'd work. So we'd never, you know, money, money is one part of the picture. And there's, I'd never put someone off picking up the phone or talking to us because they don't have the money. Yeah. You know, we can tell them how much something is going to cost and maybe give them some, give them some tools so that they can go and get the money. Yeah. You know, we charge a lot of us that way. But okay. again, that's also a good way to work because our business is all about relationships and you have to yeah. build trust with people, you know, and, and most of our business comes from referring from word of mouth. Yeah. So it sounds like though, you know, it was always about relationships, but it sounds like you're enjoying those relationships much more now than you were before when you weren't able to, there was a mismatch between what you were saying you could do and the resources you actually had to do it. Yes. Yeah. Whereas before maybe, I think a lot of businesses can get into a place where you need that next sale. Yes. Sometimes to get that, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where you don't have the resources or you're not confident yeah. enough to ask yeah. for, the, for the right price. Yeah. Because we need this to keep the doors open another month, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you need the business so badly that you go out and as soon as somebody signs the contract, you go, oh, shit. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we need another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. You get- yeah so where what you're doing now is you're building up to a point where you're comfortable with your margins and how you charge and everything so that whenever a piece of business comes in it's always a good piece of business for you yes and, and you, can, right. you can deliver it really well because you yeah, have to do it. great great comfort in that and yeah, yeah. It, it makes it enjoyable again kind of you yeah. start to remember why you got into it in the first place you know yeah 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 good yeah there was another thing that you wrote in that in that article that you read, and um, it was like about being honest internally, mm. I think, with each other and with your clients, even even yeah. if it hurts. Yeah. Tell me when, a little bit about that, because that was very honest. Even saying uh, that is very honest yeah. to put that into an article. Well, I, I guess the way I would have been in the past, again, with with all this trying to get the sale in, you'd you'd, you'd overpromise and underdeliver yeah. in the past. Yeah. You know, yes. but but each job you'd get in would put more pressure on the company, and and in fairness, me not being not honest with clients would have caused all these issues. Yeah, and that's what I found fantastic with James. He he, you have to be honest first. You know, yes, we can, do it, but it would cost it would take us this long, so we would have to build a minimum of this. Yeah. And we're allowed to make a profit. So this would be the price. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're doing things, you know, I used to be cursed with trying to help people at everyone else's expense. You know? Yes. 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 And, and it's great to have that monkey off my back where yeah. it's just, this is the price to do that. Yeah. And you're and, still helping people and yeah. you're succeeding now, whereas before you didn't always succeed maybe in helping people. Yeah. 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 Yeah, good. Um, and so, I like one of the other things that I kind of picked up from that article that you wrote that wrote, and I like have to commend you for this is that, like, at the time that you and I sat down and we talked about working together, around the time that James rolled his eyes, right? Yeah, he's you know, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you had never thought about doing coaching. You definitely didn't have a budget for coaching. In fact, you, the business was in a like a tough spot yeah but you still went and invested in that so like what was going on there? like for i suppose you had you you got james from rolling his eyes to actually looking at it and yeah. then you guys decided to invest in it like you know it's it's a substantial enough investment to make so so what was going on there that made you guys say you know what i think this was the path out for us yeah so so the first thing was you met james and then after that meeting james was open to it I was going, Jesus, what, ha- what happened there? Because this <laughs> right. man has turned fully around. But I, I think what, what, re- what we really got from you was, the, like, firstly, the fact that you sat down 
took time to talk to us and try and understand what the issues were. But then it was very matter of fact about this is how much you might not be ready now, and that's okay. But we really, we really thought this fits now. I think, I think we knew there were issues. Yeah. We tried to solve them before on our own. Yeah. And here's someone saying, I would charge X amount to help you work through these issues. And you'd come out the other side of it a lot better. Yeah. And, and for us, I think our post cognitive dissonance, you know, was reduced at every meeting. You know, okay, we're getting closer. We go to a meeting, we kind of like because you're very good at that, at helping us to understand through our own words. Yeah. What we need to do to fix things. Yeah. And the other thing as well was how fast things started to change. You know, near nearly yeah, overnight. But, that, but that's down to you though. The you guys changed yeah. the things. I didn't change the things for you, you know, but uh, yeah. But, but you you need someone to to guide that process. Yeah. 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 No, it's true. Like I'm uh, like a firm believer in like not bringing a solution, like, you know, packaging up a solution saying right here, guys, that's it, because it's never going to be exactly the right fit. But as you say, if I help you guys to figure out what your own solution is in your own words, in your own way, then we end up coming out with something that it's your solution, you know, and uh, and then you're going to implement it and then you're going to st sustain that implementation. You're going to keep it going over time and, and then hence you know, getting the business back on track um, and um, and getting to where you are at the moment, which is, uh, which, yeah, which is brilliant. It was like, you know, building on things week after week consistently. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And building them on a really good foundation because we've gone through that first part, you know, to, yeah. to how do we make ourselves better so we can yeah. do, you know? Yeah, so that's another element of it being your solution. You're fully in control of it. And so you can keep it going afterwards. And it doesn't even, it's not even a, a level thing. It's, you know, you, you you know how to add layers to it and how to make it better and better and better as, uh, yeah. as time goes on. And, so, uh, yeah. yeah. So and and it's, it's, uh, it's not, you know, my, my perceptions before going into coaching was, you know, these guys quote chapters from books. They don't really, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's all shite, you know. <laughs> right. But then it the like my our heads are still spinning on on the transformation in yeah. in eighteen months. You know, it's huge. No, it's, yeah, it's good to see, but it's good to see. But like, I think you guys need to acknowledge as well, like you're the ones that did the work there. I just only help you, guide you and show you, show oh, you the way, you know, because yeah, like, you know, it happens to all of us. It happens to me in my business. I'm too close to my own business to be able to see the wood for the trees. And so I have to have my own coach. I can't coach myself, you know, yeah. and, um, and having somebody from outside who's got that, you know, different perspective who can help you to, to show you without to sh just to, to open things up for you rather than actually saying this is how you do it but you know here let me open this up for you so you can see a better way and build it yourselves you know that makes a uh, makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah. and and like um, we found so the way we did it with you as, as you know is we we had three sessions every month one each personally and one together yeah I found that mix really worked very well for us yeah because we we would be going away working on ourselves and we'd be together working on the business and we were doing that month after month and and like i said it was just this constant progression and constant improvement yeah. Yeah. but but it was because we were being guided the right way you know so yeah, good. And I, and I really enjoyed that too like yeah. so for me like that personal bit that we did you know, one-on-one -on -one with you and one-on-one -on -one with James is great, but I really enjoy then getting you guys together and looking at like three of us figuring out, okay, what is this business about? You know, what is the, you know, what is the vision? Where is it going? And what are the kind of values that underpin it? So that then you were able to kind of build this whole thing around that and kind of, and, and move it forward, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, and, but at the same time, like it wouldn't have happened without, you know, the structure that James brings and the creativity and the marketing knowledge that you bring and all that. So, you know, all together, it all, it all worked really well, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like now, you know, we're, we're, we're hiring, 
like we were sitting here 18 months ago yeah sweating <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Jesus, so there, yeah yeah so there's a journey from sweating to hiring right yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, and international, you know. And yeah, and international. Yeah. No, it's really, really yeah. great. So I like and I, I I love to see it and I love to see like the new clients that you're bring on. I hadn't heard about that one in the US, so I'm delighted to to hear about yeah. that as well. And then love to see the new towns coming on explore and that kind of thing too. So um so yeah, look yeah. and and again, look, I just I really appreciate appreciate you taking the time here, Colin, to to talk about this with me. Um really great to to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, and again, congratulations on being international. Like two ways now. So we've got a you've got uh, international clients, and you've got your well, you've got U.S. clients and an office in Europe. Uh, well, two offices in Europe, I suppose, but an office yeah. in mainland Europe. <laughs> so uh, so well done on that. It's just a brilliant, brilliant story. And uh, thanks for sharing it with me. And um, I'll talk again soon. Cheers, Rory. Thanks a lot.